Py Simple GUI, the simple way to create graphical user interfaces with Python. Creating a simple graphical user interface, or GUI, that works across multiple platforms can be complicated. But it doesn't have to be that way. You can use Python and the Py Simple GUI package to create nice looking user interfaces that you and your users will enjoy. Py Simple GUI is a new Python GUI library that's been gaining a lot of interest recently. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to install the Py Simple GUI package, create basic user interface elements with Py Simple GUI, create applications such as a Py Simple GUI image viewer, integrate Py Simple GUI with Matplotlib, use computer vision in Py Simple GUI, and package your Py Simple GUI application for Windows. Now you know what you're going to learn, let's get started. Getting started with Py Simple GUI. Py Simple GUI was launched in 2018, so it's a relatively new package compared to the likes of WX Python or PyQt. Py Simple GUI has four ports: TKinter, PyQt, WX Python, and Remy. Py Simple GUI wraps portions of each of these other packages and makes them easier to use. However, each of the ports has to be installed separately. Py Simple GUI wraps the entirety of TKinter, which comes with Python. It's wrapped most of PySide 2, but only a small portion of WX Python. When you install Py Simple GUI, you get the TKinter variant by default, and that's what will be covered in this course. For more information about TKinter, check out Python GUI programming with TKinter. Depending on which variant of PySimple GUI you use, applications that you create with PySimple GUI may not look native to their platform. But don't let this stop you from giving PySimple GUI a try. PySimple GUI is still quite powerful and can get most things done with a little work. Installing PySimple GUI Installing the library is easy if you use pip. For the purposes of this tutorial, you'll learn how to install the regular PySimple GUI port which is a TKinter variant. Here you can see it being installed on screen. This command will install PySimple GUI to the Python environment you're currently running. In my case, I've created a virtual environment which allows more scope for experimentation with new packages without making permanent changes to your system Python installation. If you're unfamiliar with Python virtual environments, then you should read Python Virtual Environments, a primer. If you prefer to try the PyQt variant, then you can use pip install pysimplegui-qt instead. Now that you have pysimplegui installed, it's time to find out how to use it. Creating basic UI elements in pysimplegui. If you've ever used a GUI toolkit before, then you may have heard the term widgets. A widget is a generic term used to describe the elements that make up the user interface, such as buttons, labels, windows, and so on. In PySimple GUI, widgets are referred to as elements, which you may sometimes see capitalized. One of the basic building blocks of PySimple GUI is the window. To create one, you can use the following code. Window takes lots of different arguments, too many for me to cover here. However, for this example, you can give the window a title, a layout, and set the margins, which is how big the UI window will be in pixels. Read returns any events that are triggered in the window as a string, as well as a values dictionary. You'll learn more about these in later sections of this video course. When you run this code, you should see something like you're seeing on screen. This example doesn't really do much, other than possibly displaying a message to the user, but if you've ever tried GUI programming before, you'll realize that this is an achievement in itself. Normally you would have other elements besides a window in the application, so let's add some text and a button into the mix. Create a new file called hello underscore psg.py and add the code as seen on screen.
Most GUI toolkits allow you to lay out the elements using absolute positioning or by allowing the GUI to lay them out dynamically. PySimple GUI uses nested Python lists to lay out its elements. In this case, you add a text element and a button element. Then you create the window and pass in your custom layout. The last block of code here is the event loop. A graphical user interface needs to run inside a loop and wait for the user to do something. For example, the user might need to press a button in your UI or type something with their keyboard. When they do that, those events are processed by the event loop. When you use PySimple GUI, you make an event loop by creating an infinite while loop that reads events from the window object. If the user presses the OK button or the exit button, then you want the program to end. To accomplish that, you break out of the loop and close the window. As you can see, running the code generates the window with the elements that we've created, and note that the OK button functions to close the window. With the basics of PySimple GUI out of the way, in the next section, you'll see how to create a functioning application. Creating simple applications. You can create a large variety of different cross-platform GUIs using PySimple GUI. The demos that are included with the package are extensive. You can create anything from simple desktop widgets to full-blown user interfaces. In the next few sections, you'll see a few different ways to use PySimple GUI, but there's much more to it than is covered in this course. And if you want more detail, be sure to check out the other demos that are included with PySimple GUI. Creating a PySimple GUI image viewer. One of the demos on PySimple GUI's GitHub page is an image viewer. Being able to write your own custom image viewer with Python is fun. You can use this code to view your own photos or incorporate it to view photos that you download or read from a database. To keep things simple, you'll use PySimple GUI's built-in image element for viewing images. Unfortunately, in the regular version of PySimple GUI, this can only display ping and GIF formats. If you'd like to be able to open other image file types, then you can download Pillow, which supports TIFF, JPEG, and bitmap formats. Check out the PySimple GUI demo folder on GitHub for an example that shows how to do this. On the other hand, if you install the PySimple GUI QT port, you'll find that it supports more image formats out of the box than the regular version. Here is a mock-up of what the image viewer should look like at the end. This application will use much more code than the previous example, but don't be deterred by this. You'll see the creation of each part of the application in turn, and also run the app without functionality to better understand how the code works. Create a file named image underscore viewer dot py and then add the following code as seen on screen. Here on lines three and four, you import PySimple GUI and Python's OS module. Then on lines eight through 20, you create a nested list of elements that represent a vertical column of the user interface. An important parameter of PySimple GUI elements is key. This allows identification of specific elements of the interface, allowing code to reference these elements, query their state, and change their contents. For the in input text control, you give it an identity of folder. You'll use this later to access the contents of the element. You can turn events on or off for each element via the enable events parameter. The folder browse element opens the OS file selector, and while you can set a target to refer to another element's key, by default it will target the element that's before it in the list. This is how the folder location is sent to the image folder input text control, as you will see when the program runs. The list box element will display a list of paths to the images that you can then choose from to display. You can pre-fill the list box with values by passing in a list of strings. When you first load up your user interface, you want the list box to be empty, 
so it's passed an empty list. Events are turned on for this element, its size is set, and it's given a unique identifier. The list of lists on lines 22 through 27 creates three elements. The first element tells the user that they should choose an image to display. The second element displays the name of the selected file. And the third displays the image. Note that the image element has a key set so it can be referred to and altered later on. For more information on the image element, check out the documentation. The last list on lines 29 to 36 contains the code that controls how the elements are laid out on the screen. This code contains two column elements with a V separator between them, and note the spelling of V separator. This is an alias for vertical separator. You can learn more how column and V separator work by reading their respective documentation pages. The window is created with a title and the layout using a line you've already seen before. While the final program will have more complexity in the event loop, let's just create the basics and run the program to see if the interface looks as we planned. This will also let you test out the folder selection as this is part of PySimple GUI. Let's now run the program and check firstly that it works, secondly that it looks the way that it should, and thirdly that we can select a folder and have the path appear in the image folder text input control. With that working, now let's add more code to the loop to start making the program functional. This time you check the event against the folder key, which refers to the in element you created earlier. If the event exists, then you know that the user has chosen a folder, and you can use os.listdir to get a file listing. Then you filter that list down to only the files of the extension PNG or GIF. As mentioned earlier, you can avoid having to narrow down your image types by using Pillow or PySimple GUI QT instead. Finally, the file list is updated in the window. Let's see that part of the code in action. You can see the file names now appear in the file list. Now you can take a look at the next part of the conditional statement. If the event equals file list, then you know that the user has chosen a file in the list box and you want to update the image element as well as the text element that shows the selected file name on the right. Now we'll run the code and take the program through its paces. You can use the browse button to find a folder on your computer with images in it so you can try this code out. Or you can copy and paste a path to a file in the text element. Once you're done viewing your images, you're ready to learn how to use matplotlib with PySimple GUI and that's what's covered in the next section.